So, um, so we're going to move on to our second uh, morning keynote speaker. Um, I have the immense pleasure of introducing to you Alejandra Castillo. Alejandra Castillo's presentation will serve as a prelude to our second plenary session, which focuses on pitching and fundraising for entrepreneurs. In 2014, the U.S. Secretary of Commerce appointed Alejandra Castillo to serve as the National Director of the Minority Business Development Agency. Ms. Castillo is the first Hispanic American and second woman to lead the agency since its creation. In this capacity, Ms. Castillo directs the, directs the agency's strategic efforts to enhance the growth and global competitiveness, I need my glasses, I'm sorry, of minority business enterprises. Under Ms. Castillo's leadership, the agency has expanded its effort to help minority business enterprises grow and succeed through access to capital, access to contract, and access to business opportunities, both domestically and abroad. Prior to assuming this role, she served as a national deputy director, managing the agency's day-to-day -day operations and its national network of 44 business centers. I, I would like to, for us to keep our voices down a little bit. A practicing attorney for several years, Ms. Castillo has worked in the private, government, and nonprofit sector. Prior to joining the Obama administration, Ms. Castillo served as the executive director of the Hispanic National Bar Association headquartered in Washington, DC. A native of New York, Ms. Castillo holds a bachelor's degree of arts from the State, of, State University of New York at Stony Brook in economics and political science. Ms. Castillo holds a master's degree in public policy from the Lyndon Baines Johnson School of Public Affairs, University of Texas at Austin, and also holds a Juris Doctorate degree from American University, Washington College of Law. In 2010, Hispanic Business Magazine recognized Ms. Castillo among the top 100 influential Latinos in the United States, and she, re and she received the 2010 Rising Star Award by the Hispanic Bar Association of, Dis of the District of Columbia, of the District of Columbia. Please help me welcome my friend, Alejandra Castillo. Alejandra. Okay, by the way. Felicidades. Muy buenos días. Okay, vamos a pararnos, a tomar un momento para que se paren, porque sé que muchos de ustedes han estado eh, bien atentas hoy. So, just, you know, shake it off a little bit because we're going to have a wonderful and interesting uh, conversation. Stretch a little bit. And um, take your seats now. Do again. <laughs> so here's a couple of things, okay? This is a conversation. This is a dialogue that begins today but will not end today. This is a dialogue that we're going to continue because we really need to make sure that we make some important inroads in this, uh, in this field. So let me read you a quote. If your dreams don't scare you, then you're not dreaming big enough, right? How many of you are scared? Excellent, wow. True testament that you're dreaming big. That's important because uh, it's often that we have these wonderful ideas and there's always someone, un tío, una tía, que te dice, what are you thinking, right? <laughs> but then you have another tía or another tío who says, wow, that's brilliant, right? So in Spanish, we usually say, dime con quien anda y te diré quien eres, right? The fact that you're here today, the fact that you're surrounding yourself today, with these amazing Latinas in this wonderful Google campus, that means that your destiny is on its way. That means that you are going to succeed. So congratulate you. So Alan uh, Lakin said, planning is bring, bringing the future into the present so that you can do, do something about it. Let me say that again. Planning is bringing the future into the present so that you can do something about it now. That's what we're doing today. We're planning. We are making sure that 
We build the roads to success. And I'm going to take a minute to um, acknowledge a couple of people because um, this is about making sure that you don't feel alone. So Edward Avila, who I think you're going to be hearing about uh, in, uh, right after, uh, throughout the afternoon, from Manos Accelerator, is doing a great job. They are creating the ecosystem for entrepreneurship and innovation for Latinos. And that ecosystem is critical. When we talk about ecosystem, it's this big, big concept. What does that mean? What is the ecosystem? What are the ingredients of the ecosystem? And I come to you as part of the federal government. And I know that sometimes people see the federal government as perhaps an impediment. But let me tell you something. I invite you to learn more about what government does. As, Franklin, as uh, Francis Colon said, as policymakers, we are part of that ecosystem. And sometimes people forget that the federal government, in many ways, has planted the seed for many of the innovations that you enjoy today. How do they do that? Has anyone visited a national lab? Show of hands. I would expect that in this audience, everyone would be raising their hands. Why? Because you have two amazing national labs just to rock throw away. Does anybody know who, which national labs I'm talking about? So Lawrence Livermore? And? And, and well, Sandia's in Albuquerque, not too far. Um, and uh, Berkeley, right? But you have Sandia. You have a Los Alamos, you have Argonne National Lab, you have Brookhaven National Lab. These are great incubators of research and development. So when I was asked to talk about this um, on this panel, what are the opportunities that the government provides? You know, sometimes um, it's hard to navigate those opportunities. Um, sometimes we look at them and we want uh, a magic wand to just um, hopefully give us the money to continue our... Um, our, uh, our research or our innovation. It's not as simple, but it's not impossible. So if you have a, um, a company that has an educational component to the business model, I'll encourage you to go to grants.gov. Grants.gov. On grants.gov, you're going to see a, a deluge of opportunities. And these are the opportunities that I would invite you if they don't apply to you, share them. Make sure that somebody in your network is leveraging them. Um, there's also a lot of research grants. Research grants that you have to um, uh, look into, whether it's, uh, again, National Labs or the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Um, there's also a lot of grants through NIH, uh, grants through the National Science Foundation. All of these are federal agencies that support STEM. Again, I'm not suggesting they're easy to find or to get, but unless you try, these grants will not go to you. So we're trying to make sure that we educate folks, particularly in the minority business community, on how to best leverage that. And I'm happy to say that on November 4th, in collaboration with the National Institute of Standards and Technology, MBDA will host uh, a symposium for minority serving institutions. We're going to bring three representatives of every MSI, minority serving institution, to be able to look at what's happening in these national labs, to be able to look at what's happening in the nanotechnology parks that they have, to be able to understand how do you come, um, how do you bring forth your ideas? How do you get that grant to take, um, to take the uh, original concepts and really apply them? There's a big movement in the federal government in terms of tech transfer or what we call lab to market. And this is the role that you play. Because I always believe that as Latinos, if in fact the saying goes that necessity is the mother of invention, then we're all innovators. Um, and I want to make sure that you understand that because as Francis said, and there are some other folks in the uh, federal government who will be here to, with you today, Alejandra Cejas is one of them, my friend um, Katina Rojas Joy, who who is a former, <laughs> was a former um, colleague. Um, we have been, for example, I've been in D.C. for 22 years, and I'm always amazed that, as as Francis said, 
our voices are not heard when it comes to STEM. Um, we can be bombarded by all the statistics about um, dropout rate and poverty. Um, these are all real. But I'm going to invite you to defy the statistics. The fact that you are here, the fact that Angelica put this wonderful panel together, is a beginning to defy the statistics. Let me tell you very briefly, I have the privilege to work for the US Department of Commerce under the leadership of a entrepreneur, Penny Pritzker, who has begun a wonderful journey as our secretary uh, talking about open for business. And many of you may not know exactly what commerce does, so let me give you a brief primer. You get your weather from commerce. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Talk about a lot of research and, and STEM opportunities there. You also get your time. So the time that your um, cell phones uses is managed by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. How many students are in the room? Show of hands, wonderful. I know that you're writing great research papers. If you ever write a research paper, I can assure you that you are citing census data. That census data comes from the US Department of Commerce. Why is that census data so important, particularly for business? Because you need to know where your customers are, right? So as entrepreneurs, the census data is not just numbers and maps. It tells you where your clients are, and more importantly, where they're likely to be. So as you look at your, entre uh, your ideas, Make sure that you consult the census data, because I'm telling you, Google does. So you need to make sure that you're leveraging the same tools that the big companies are. We are also the International Trade Administration. We know that minority-owned companies are twice as likely to export. As entrepreneurs, you need to understand that 95, 95 of the world's consumers live outside of the US borders. The fact that you speak Spanish, the fact that you are Latinos, the fact that you understand the business culture of Colombia, Dominican Republic, um, El Salvador, positions you in a very unique place to be able to tap into those markets. So when you're looking at your entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial ideas, think about how do you go global. The other thing that we are is we are the Economic Development, Development Agency. We help states and cities in their infrastructural development, in their public works. So commerce does a lot of different things. And again, I'm here to tell you that there's a gap of knowledge between Latinos and what the federal government can do for them. I'm going to echo Francis because, you know, we have a, uh, Cynthia mentioned, had a question earlier today about how do you access it takes the sisterhood. You know, in DC, we have a wonderful sisterhood of individuals who are in the public policy arena. And I'm glad to see that um, Alejandra Cejas is gonna be talking to you later. And we exchange information, we exchange tips, we exchange um, ideas of how can we, in the public space, create policies that can build that ecosystem that I mentioned before. Because let me tell you, we're newcomers. We are newcomers to this space, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't learn how the game is played. That all only means that your learning curve is going to be, uh, needs to be faster. So one of the things that I want to leave you with, um, the Minority Business Development Agency was created 45 years ago. We are celebrating our 45th anniversary this year, and we are changing the way business is done in the US, because the demographics are forcing us to change. Latino-owned businesses, 2.3 million of them, are growing. Latina-owned businesses are the fastest growing. So the challenge is this. It's not just to start the business. It's to be able to look at your business and say, how am I going to grow it? Because by growing it, you do two critical things. One, you create jobs. And we all know that our communities need jobs. Two, we create wealth. And this is a big passion of mine. We need to start to change the way we look at business, the way we look at money. It is about wealth creation. How many of you have uh, seen a business very successful, 
Five years later, you go back to that business and the business is no longer there. Show of hands. Why is that? Part of it is failure to do succession planning, right? A lot of great businesses, um, the owner now 40 years into the business and they're thinking of what's next and they think that maybe the daughter or the son wants to take over the business. Guess what? They want to go to Hollywood and be a Hollywood producer. Yeah, so what happens to that business? It dies. If you're, going to be, if you're going to build wealth in the United States of America, you need to look at it from a long-term perspective. You need to look at it from a generational perspective. How do you pass it on? How do you sell it? How do you acquire more businesses? And the issue of finance is critical. I know that there's a robust um, panel right after me, so I'm not going to steal their thunder. But there are a lot of different ways. Um, I was just speaking to Carol in the back, in the back about angel investors. Um, we need to talk about not just debt financing, but equity financing. Many of you may think of business as an adventure. It's also an opportunity to learn multiple disciplines. You know, I'm a lawyer. I went to law school. They never taught me anything about business. Guess what? When the, when the recession hit, if you were at a law firm and you couldn't generate business, you were the first one out. So I'm always encouraging people, regardless of your professional background, think about the tools that you need to learn about business. And those tools are out there. The Small Business Administration, which is now head by another fabulous Latina, Maria Contreras Sweet from California, has a lot of amazing webinars, information to share, um, if you need resources, you, you should go to one of the small business um, offices. If you also need technical assistance, come to MBDA. We have three centers here in the Bay Area. Three centers. There is no excuse to say, I didn't know, I don't know how to grow my business. We are here to help. We are here to encourage you to think about STEM, to be passionate about it, but to also think about it wisely as a business owner. Thank you so much for this time. I do want to tell you something, um, and I want to quote yet again Mark Twain in this, in this part. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the ones you did. So throw off the bow, bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sail, explore dream and discover. That's my challenge to you and thank you very much for your time.